what's up everybody welcome back to the channel see i'm set up for another install you saw in the last video i said i was going to be installing this uh intercooler coolant manifold that uh goes right there between the two intercoolers and i ported this one out and i uh, poured it out on the inside a little smoothed it out there were some uh sharp edges on the turn some raised edges on the turn so i smoothed all that out the best that I could got it pretty smooth in there so uh, I'm gonna get set up I'm gonna take this off and then I'm gonna show you the comparison between the two so I get right back with you after I get this off all right you guys you see I got it out this is them right here you see a comparison see how this one has a big step right there it narrows it down a lot so I opened this one up I just use these, those, some of those uh, spiral sanding discs that goes on the end of a drill. I tried to bevel it and then barely open it up a little bit because I didn't want to thin it out. But you can see how this has all this extra meat around it because you have this ridge too. So I was able to bevel that in some and then kind of make it go in. But you can see on the other side here, let me see. See, I opened this up too, and you can't really tell. I'm trying to get a shot where you can see. If you, can, if you let me see, let me see if I can get the camera on. I mean, the light on. There. Probably still not gonna help much, but uh, if you look down in there, I'm trying to get a good angle. Can't really see. But there's a step in there, like, a, and it makes a sharp uh, turn a little bit. So I smoothed all that out and opened it up a little bit on both sides. You kind of see in this one. So it makes that turn a lot smoother. You can see that right there. Whereas this one has that step. Just to hold them up against each other kind of see that one and that one but anyway uh, I did get the uh, ATP cooling ports and you can see they're about the uh, about the same size as the ported one that I did so it kind of opened it up about that much barely so basically these are these match the ports on the cooler so whereas these they were i measured them before i wrote them down somewhere but they were all different size i think these two were the smallest but they were all basically different sizes so like i said uh i was going to run the atp you can see i went and got these uh 90 degree hoses to run it and what i was going to do i was going to try to run it in the factory position somehow so i was just going to cut these back because you can see that the two feed and return hoses are offset. So the fact that these are smaller, like, like I blew through this and I had my hand on both of the exit sides and there was barely any air coming through this side because this, uh, I'm guessing because this uh, port is closer to the other side. And the same thing with this one is almost almost right on top of the other side. So what I was going to try to do was uh, with these hoses is try to move. Uh, and I got these right here for the middle. They're, these are three quarter inch holes that I got. So I was going to try to move these ports here to the middle, but on the ATP setup. So they're kind of more evened out and you're getting better and equal flow to both sides. But what most people do is for when they use these is because they're running dual pumps, dual cooling pump. I'm running the CWA 150. Some people will run the CWA 100 and they will run uh, two of them. So each cooler is running its own pump. So, you know, there's more volume going through. But this CWA has a lot of uh, has a lot of flow on it, has a lot more uh, flow going through the pump. If you go back a few videos, when I did the CWA 150, I showed a graph 
of uh, and it showed the uh, flow rates of each and every pump, the CWA-150, CWA-100, and the stock CWA-50. Uh, so the CWA was like way up there. And uh, I did look at other videos of uh, and did a little some more research and everyone with uh, even different uh, brands, different manufacturers, like uh, people with race shops and stuff, they all of them almost say that the more flow, the better, because you're getting more coolant flow going through the coolers. That's going to help cool down those intake temps a lot better. So, but I wanted to try, I had the idea to try this first to see, but probably, you know, I might go ahead and run a dual setup later, but I was thinking maybe to just run this for now and see what kind of, you know, an experiment just to see what kind of, uh, performance i would get out of it what kind of benefit i would get out especially since i'm running that pump you can already see here how much i open these up so more cooling is going to get through a lot easier too so should be seeing some more performance and I, but i don't know if that's going to make it probably won't make it run a lot cooler but it'll probably make it to where when the temp rises up it'll cool down a lot faster because i'm getting more coolant going through it but I'm actually uh, have a ported charger that I'm going to be doing a video on, but I haven't put it on the car yet. So later on, especially with the summer coming up, I might go ahead and do the dual pump setup with uh, with the uh, ATP cooling porch. And I'll probably bevel these two just like I did, though, so the water's not hitting that edge and, you know, opening it up. But I'm going to get this installed and I'll get right back with you guys. I'm pretty much did the bleed already it's pretty easy i'm show you guys how i do it so what i did was uh when i took all this off i left the cap on and what that does is it it kind of locks the coolant right all the way up to the edge of this hole so when i take this off there's not really any coolant coming out so no air is in the system all the way up to that point so when i take this off you know of course some coolant's going to come out of the uh out of the uh, inner cooler, so that's all I'm gonna have to bleed. So what I did was uh, put everything back together, of course, and took both screws out. And what I did was, then you could take your cap off, and but you can see what I did. I made this little uh, contraption. I did this before the last time. And uh, I put it in the uh, inner cooler holes, kind of ghetto, just some straws going on it is to make the uh, end small enough to fit into the uh, intercooler ports back here but you take both of these screws out and you take one end put it here and you pour coolant in here until you see coolant coming out the other side that pushes all the air out and then i do the same thing on this side pour coolant in until you know and it's going to push all the air through here and right out the other intercooler so the intercoolers are full and then to make sure i got everything out i uh went and got this uh this uh coolant uh pressure system from autozone this cooling system pressure tester kit lets you uh put pressure in it so you can kind of force air out it's really to test for leaks but you can use it to bleed too so i pumped this up to like 15 psi you can see there then you just open the ports and then you can kind of hear that that's like any air coming out until you see coolant coming out, just coolant coming out. And then I did that probably like uh, two or three times on both sides. And then that's how I got it bled. I did that before and it, you know, it was like the easiest way to bleed the uh, cooling system, get air out of everything. But I'm gonna put everything back together and I get right back with you guys. All right, you guys, I'm back. Uh taking out for a test drive now, just bled all the air out. and. Right now, it's like staying, it's what, it's 70 degrees out? And it's like 81, it's staying around, uh, it's staying around 10 degrees above ambient, 10 or 11, but it's under 20, which it was before, but this is not, because I just started driving it, so I'm taking it a little bit away from my house right now to get gas. My car is like on E. So that'll let the car sit for a minute and let it, uh, you know, get some heat in the inner cooler so I can see what it's really doing. Then I'll get on it too. But right now it's like, I can already see that it's, the coolant is flowing 
a lot better. Usually by now I would have went up. I would have started going up already. It, it only tends. But you can see right now uh, it's staying at like 11 degrees above ambient. So I'll get back with you guys in a minute after I fill up. Guys, I'm back. Uh, it's it's, it's uh, 71 degrees. I'm at 90. So it's sticking around. 20 degrees above ambient sometime a little bit of below sometime a little bit above so what i did notice was uh i went and got gas i let the car sit for a minute so the intercoolers would uh heat so and it got up to like 131 degrees when i start the car back up and i am running right now with the uh with the uh, pwm wire so it's not it, the pump is not running at a hundred percent a hundred percent of the time with the PWM pulled so it's running like stock basically the uh, computer is controlling the pump right now but I'm still seeing uh, a little bit of improvement it's like uh, the temps will go down a little bit faster so this might be worth uh, looking into might be worth looking into uh, Maybe have somebody uh, 3D print one with the uh, ports in a different position, and you know, and the whole the whole uh, header throughout a little bit bigger diameter throughout. So it might be worth looking into that. So I'm, I'm probably going to start looking for somebody that can uh, 3D print this and uh, go from there. And then, like I said, of course, uh, you could you could run this uh, with the system divorce. Mine's not divorced. I'm running it just like stock. So the only difference is uh, I'm running the CWA 150, and I do have the other harness, so it can run at 100%. So I'll probably test it with that too later to see how it does with that. But I'm gonna head back to the house right now, then uh, we'll go from there. I'll get right back with you guys. All right, you guys, I'm back. Uh one other thing I noticed, uh, there was a lot of traffic on the freeway, so I couldn't really get on it, but I got on it when I got on the streets. And one thing I noticed is that when I get on it, it's uh, the temps don't rise anywhere near as fast as they used to with the uh, CWA 50, of course. But even with uh, the CWA 150, the temps did go down. But I noticed with doing this, because it's getting a lot more flow now, well, a little bit more flow now, maybe, that uh, the temps aren't uh, the temps aren't rising as high as as quickly. Once you get on it, because I did, I did, I went out and did a few pulls right now, and it still will get up there, but nowhere near as much as high as it used to, and it and it rises slower. Then of course it, it the temps will start going back down. But I still think uh, maybe the uh, Velocity AP ports with the dual pump setup running one one pump one in each intercooler might be the best option. Of course, with divorcing the system running water and running straight water through that through the uh, intercooler system might be the best. It's probably going to get you lower, more consistent temps throughout the drive. Whereas this one is still a shared system, and I'm running the 50/50 uh, mix of water. And uh, so you know, it's not as efficient as running as the uh, the Vossi AP ports with a dual pump system and everything. Ken, Ken. Sorry about that. Ken's over here testing his bug. <laughs> hey, Ken. Turn it down some. Oh, so like I said, uh, I might look into running a dual systems, a dual pump setup. See how people do that and uh, wire it up and everything and might run the Velocity AP ports. I already got the hoses. I had these, I went and bought, I was trying to find some odd hoses for running everything like this, but in the stock location, so I found, uh, I had some old hoses, so I was just gonna run this like this, cut it right there with the bigger hoses and the uh, Velocity AP port setup you saw that I had. So everything is running closer to the middle 
and then I got another one too to run it from here to over there but I'll see if I can get that to work but I'm thinking the the uh, Velocity AP ports with a dual pump system might might be the best so we'll see but I'm, I'm actually thinking about running a, a killer chiller system on this so I'll see which one if I could find a good deal on that and see which one I'll be able to get to first. But that's going to be it for this video, y'all. Uh, thanks for watching. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.